Welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. We have just come from the Termitary where we spoke with Brock and also took care of the Black Market Panaceers. So I'm coming over here to test the blood sample at Ava's place. And also Ian sent me a letter saying that there's people around Ava's place that are troubling her. So hopefully I can deal with that as well. And I think I'm going to speak with the Canes, see if they have anything interesting to say, and probably speak with the Inquisitor as well. And then after all that, I think we need to have a little chat with young Vlad. Buying up all the panacea, being the original person. He Hello guard, would you like to maybe do something about this? No? Kinda? Okay. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Little Vlad, being the one who filled in his well, being the one who actually originally knew about the infection in the termitary. Even before his father did. He's been up to a lot of bad things. I'm feverish. What can it be? We've lost our independence. The Thurgic Tower will be trampled. The Inquisitor will turn us into a common village, a town of men. However brilliant an action, it should not be esteemed great unless the result of a great motive. And Burak has made his final move. He'll probably talk to the foreman about his father. No madman. I wonder what we're going to find in that sample of blood, or sample of something, that Brock gave me. The description said it was strangely heavy, making me think that maybe it's not actually blood. What? Autumn is gloomy this year. Are the troops really led by the famous Alexander Block? This is madness. So nothing of interest from the canes. What about the Inquisitor? Ooh, that guy might have a bandage. And I don't have any left, and bandages are really important to have. Yes, bandage. short it always is. Well, that was a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, guard? Guard, please? Guard? There you go. Right, so reports of strange people hanging around this place around Ava's place. Let's be on the lookout. Gun ready. Don't see anyone. Let's go speak with her. Oh! The dog heads. Hi. What a lovely lady. She welcomed us. She talked to us. Children are not allowed to be in contact with the kin people, you know. Forbidden fruit and all that. It is the sweetest one. And 
And who might these petitioners be? Petitioners indeed. Well, see, we've all heard about your efforts. So, well, we've decided to set up embassy here. We've been told all about your plan to sterilize us all. <laughs> what? What? Who told you this drivel? Um, wrong wording, I guess? I meant curing us. Uh, making us healthy, that is. Distributing protective pills. Wiping us with spirits. Gargle with mouthwash, if you please. Bathe your feet like a good kid, you are. To avoid the infection and stuff. Okay, and this is a bad thing, why? Uh, yes, I did indeed have such a plan. Uncle Bachelor. We don't... Is this misspelled or is it actually supposed to be pronounced this way? Neat. We don't need vaccine. The order was the Inquisitors, but you'll be held responsible. Don't. It'll be a simple waste of precious medicine. Better give it to our families. We're all healthy up there. And healthy will we remain, hand on heart. What is that supposed to mean, young man? Our tower is magical. It protects us from the outer world. Everybody knows that, duh. And we're like, see, if you care about us so much, better bring us some dry blue fire that doesn't burn paper. You've come from another place, after all. Do they have that kind of fire there? Dry blue fire? What are you talking about? How can there be a fire that doesn't burn paper? The tower? Magical? Sounds fishy. I think it demands a thorough inspection. Well, hold on, Bachelor. I think it's pretty obvious the tower is magical since its very construction and existence is impossible. It can't exist. It doesn't make any sense. It would topple over. Please don't. Khan wouldn't let you in. You're contagious. How are you lot going to return, then? We are not. We're an operational squad. Tomorrow we'll be sent on a very important mission to deal with the oppressors that are trying to exterminate us. And, well, tough luck for us. The tower is only impregnable for the infection from the outside. That's just how it works. The mechanics of it. Mechanics, huh? Like you know what the word even means. I need proof. Oh, just ask anyone. Even Capella. Yeah, go pay her a visit. She doesn't believe in the tower's miracles at all. But she'll provide you with proof, all right. She wouldn't lie, after all. Which means her testimony is the most reliable one, I guess. All right. I'll talk to Capella. The young lady Ogimsky probably has the most untainted view of whatever is going on inside that mysterious tower on the other side. I'll ask her. Oh, that's weird. She doesn't even mention the people that are staying here. I would be kind of disturbed if they just showed up all of a sudden. Okay. Let us examine the sample. By the way, is that a side quest? Yeah. Third side quest for the day. The emissaries from the tower request that I leave the tower and its residents alone. As if I was pestering them all this while. They say that everything is perfectly well inside the tower, and that Olgimsky's daughter will confirm it. This serves more to increase my suspicions than curb them. Only yesterday, the same kind of assurances were offered with regard to the termitary. I need to speak with Capella. Oh, uh, right. How many more extracts do I have, by the way? Oh, just one more? I thought I had stored a lot more in there. In that case, I've only got two Twyrine extracts left. Hmm. Maybe I should have traded for those immunity pills last time. Okay. What is inside of this, Barak? Well, that doesn't look normal. The hell am I looking at? I mean, this is normal blood. OK, 
Okay. Well, I've examined it. Did that update the quest? Did I ever actually have a specific quest to examine it? I did, didn't I? Yeah. I need to study the contents under the microscope immediately. But the quest didn't update. Hmm. Well, I'm sure I'm going to be going back to the termitary sometime anyway, so... I guess next time I'm there, I'll speak with them and see if I can tell them something new. Tell them what I've found. Antibiotics. Hey, the price of antibiotics went up, didn't it? I think this costed five before, now it's six. Eh, I might be wrong. I might be just misremembering it. Buy one of those and one. Um, one of the antibiotics? Don't think I need both. Okay, next stop. Little Vlad. I guess you could say, Little Vlad is in big trouble. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, please don't burn me with that. Your aim sucks. You guys need some help. Oh, shit. Oh. Thought he's attacking me. Mm. Ah, Plague Rat. I don't have time to select my weapon. Somebody said if you crouch and attack the rat with a blade, you can do it, but it seems too dangerous. Ah, that's not worth it. It's easy enough to avoid them, even if they are annoying. Hello, little Vlad. Let's have a chat, shall we? There's this thing that needs to be done. Oh, there's many things that need to be done. You know, before we go talking about the big thing, maybe I should mention the small thing. Because who knows, maybe he'll give me money for it or something. Whereas if I tell him that I'm taking him to the termitary, and by the way, he's going to be killed by Taya, he's probably not going to want to give me money. I can warn him about the termitary. Well, let's just start with the black market. Well, I found the worm poison makers. But they told me that you, Master Vlad, have also dabbled in the Panacea Black Market. Yes, when I learned that Barak had concocted a Panacea, I decided to completely seize the flow of goods. That's how the informers came to know I requested it on purpose. Make no mistake, this isn't about greed. I simply thought it would be prudent to control this market. One would emerge anyway. So your concern for the Bound was only a disguise. You were only ever concerned with turning a profit. It seems my old reputation will take a while to get rid of. Your knowledge is outdated, Bachelor. Things have changed. I have changed. This morning, I wanted to seize the Panacea Black Market. So I bought up everything that Barak has made and distributed. And... I gave away all that I had bought. No money. Well, a little money so that I wouldn't look like I'm offering a donation. I gave it all to the bound, the ones who needed it the most, in my opinion. Those who nearly died because of me. Who? 
I promise to keep their names secret. I'm wary of Clara, you see. She's very good at getting what she needs from people. Both words and things. Well, one of them is Mark Immortel. He's not hiding it, but his situation is different. He's running a plague house after all. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I won't give you over, Sataya. Also, just in case this is important, I'm going to write, write down that Mark Immortel has panacea. But you have spared at least one for yourself, I hope. Haven't you? I need neither money nor protection from death now. The latter because I want to give the plague the opportunity to punish me for my acts. And the former, please spare me your mockery, is because I now aspire to something. Call me sentimental. I won't reveal it. I don't want to scare the dream away. You've given me serious food for thought. Thank you. If Vlad the Younger's words are to be believed, Mark Immortel is one of the people who received panacea from him. Hmm. So is that saying I should go speak with Mark Immortel just to double check? What little Vlad is telling me? Make sure he's telling the truth? Let's see. Yes, people do change a lot. Before, I was convinced that this man was beyond salvation. I thought that nothing less than death could make the leper change its spots. But I see a new man before me now. His former self has died. But not before he gave the entirety of his panacea stock to Mark Immortel. Wait, what? I thought he gave one panacea to Mark Immortel for him to use on himself. He gave all of it to him? Okay. Have you heard? The military arrives tomorrow. Hmm. I get the feeling I should go speak with Marky Mortel before I do the super, super, super serious conversation with little Vlad about him knowing about the infection. And Marky Mortel is just a little bit north. Shouldn't take more than a couple minutes to go speak with him. So let's do it. Six, seven, eight. I've got eight hours left in the day. Not bad. I should need to sleep before nightfall, so... Yeah, I think I'll be fine. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Knowing our fortune in advance, could we predict our conduct? Finally, I can have an actual conversation with Mark. That doesn't happen very often. Tell me, has Olgimski the Younger really sold you several vials of panacea? He didn't even sell them. He gave them to me basically for free. Or maybe for a token payment. You know, I never expected something like this from him. I would suspect an intricate and crafty scheme on his part, but I think I have also changed. So I believe him. Did Vlad really let someone else have his panacea? I didn't believe him. Hmm. Yes, he's given his panacea to the girls that have once almost died through his fault. At least, he thinks so now. Actually, it's very typical of a person of his temper. In a situation like this, he's giving his possessions away with a firm and steady hand, paying the old debts. 
but the girls at once almost died through his fault. Who are these girls? Oh, fine. He gave it to the girls, to Yulia, Laura, and the third one that begs to keep her name secret under any circumstances. Think of them as the three parse. Let me write this down just in case. Yulia. Lara. Her name's secret under any circumstances. Who would that be? Would that be Anna? Probably Anna. Anna, question mark. It must be Anna, right? Oh, yes, she's an incredibly mysterious person. Rest assured that her incognito will not be uncovered. The army arrives tomorrow. That's not the train we were waiting for. Huh, looks like that finished the quest. What is going on? Are they playing tricks on me again? It shouldn't be hard to tell. Mark gave the panacea to those whose lives are in most immediate peril. Namely to Laura Yulia and some individual who expressed a desire to remain incognito. Honestly, she didn't have to take the that she didn't have to take the trouble, this individual. It's gotta be Anna. Well, since the quest is done, do I even need to go speak with Lara and Yulia and Anna? Is there any point? I don't know. I do know I need to go speak with Capella. Ask her if the polyhedron is actually free of infection. Let's go do that, and then I guess head to little Vlad's place. Maybe I should speak to the speak to the so-called girls before going back to Little Vlad just to double triple check his story. I don't know. You have anything new to say? Someone will have to be punished for this sin. Hmm. I can talk to him about the whole termitary issue. Is it true that you've covered for your son? What is this slanderous rubbish? I know everything. Drop the act. Why on earth would I cover for him? It was him, not you, who'd locked up the termitary. Well, fully aware of the epidemic, wasn't it? My boy was absolutely in the right. Naturally, he was at a loss. His decision was too radical. He couldn't inform everyone because it was just that kind of day. You lot came to crowd us when it was already too late. We knew by then that unlocking the termitary would mean destroying the town. And yet you've decided to take the fall for him. As if the fall was obligatory. His hand was forced, and then his mouth was shut. He had no choice. He cared for me, in his own way. He did exactly like I taught him, and so I did my best to care for him, when it was my turn. Wait, what does he mean his hand was forced and then his mouth was shut? Little Vlad? Why? What do you mean? What are you going to do now? I'm responsible for everything. Since the day when I learned of his actions, from him personally, if I might add. I remain responsible for them. Well, it's your choice. Why are my children like this? Do I want to broach the issue of Taya wanting to kill the person who ordered to lock up the termitary? Hmm. Not yet. Maybe. Uh, should I? What am I waiting on? Fine, let's do it. A fine foreman he is. Oyun the Bullhead. 
talked to Harrisbeck head to head. It'll come to a head. He is talking so quietly, I can't even hear what he's saying. Keeper Mother wants to see the man who has issued the order to lock up the termitary. You mean the little Tai Chi girl? The little girl is surrounded by an army of butchers, who seem to be very eager to follow every word of hers. Well, she's got every right to demand it. I'm not going to hide from her. He who has sinned must be able to face the music. Wait. He's gonna, he's gonna go? I don't even have any choice in this? I can't even send little Vlad or, or anything like that? Oh, shit. Uh, go then, she's waiting for you. Wait, but that didn't even update the quest. Huh. Weird, that didn't actually do anything as far as I can tell. Okay, Capella. Tell me about the polyhedron. Father has been avoiding me lately. Strange. They say, young lady, that you are somewhat skeptical towards the peculiar qualities of this polyhedron. And who says that? Its inhabitants. That's not how it is. You cannot ignore the obvious. The tower does manage to perform truly breathtaking feats. And yes, by the way, I am sure that the disease, being of particular interest to you, or any other evil from outside, cannot get into the tower whatsoever. It is evil enough on its own. I'd like to know more about its inherent evil, young lady. I admit that the tower can't perform miracles, but I do not believe it's miraculous by nature. It's dead, you see. It does not live. That is why it can do what it does. A living person would see just how blasphemous it is. How in the world is it blasphemous? Yes, the tower preserves childhood together with all its magic. But you cannot grasp a miracle and hold to it mechanically. You cannot treat the miraculous like that. A miracle can only reveal itself through a living person, like my mother, and be born of magical power, not of rationale. What? I didn't understand any of that, really. Other than somehow the tower is preserving childhood. So does the tower do it rationally? The Canes have set up a seditious experiment. The Stamatins bragged that they had overcome the laws of gravity and Euclidean geometry. Whilst in reality, it was the Canes who took it upon themselves to attack the laws of sorcery and the miraculous powers that stumble upon our world from time to time. While the Stamatins were building ladders, the Canes were creating foci. Is it foci or is it foci? Foci. Focuses. Foci. I think it's foci. And what's wrong with that? Isn't it wonderful? I don't know. You're brave, and my duty dictates caution. It's getting more and more frightening by the minute. The reckoning is yet to come, if it hasn't already. The tower defies the very nature of miracles, you see. It imprisons them. That's why the wisest children have already left it. What? I, I don't understand what she's saying. I honestly don't. I don't understand this tower. The tower preserves childhood and it preserves magic. It imprisons... miracles. What does that mean? I don't understand. How curious. Which ones? Uh, apart from you, that is. Taya Taichik, for instance. A five-year-old kid worshipped by the kin. They call her the Mother Superior. 
she was merely a careless kidling in the tower. And now she's in charge of the termitary and the 5,000 souls inside. Have you been there already, by the way? I'm worried about her. I have. If you happen to come by, please give her this medicine and tell her that I, me personally, it's important, that I told her to take it if she ever feels unwell. She will trust me. Otherwise, they'll keep taking those horrible yellow pills. The only ones they acknowledge. Sure. And this tower story of yours was most engaging. I'm very happy I've decided to drop by. Please come by later to tell me how it went. It means the world to me. Alright. So she just gave me some good antibiotics, I think. Oh my god, I've been... I've been wearing the Talon Mask this entire time. Let's take that off. That's creepy. I wonder if that's changed in any, any of the conversations what? I've had with people. Okay, so what just updated? This. Capella asked me to give the medicine to Warden Taichik's little daughter. This extraordinary child whom the beastly crowd of primates obey and serve as they would serve a little goddess. Apparently, the children's mysterious influence in the town extends much further than the Kane family. Okay, so now I've got two reasons to go back to the Termitary. One is to give the medicine to Taya, and the other is to talk to Barack about the mysterious sample that I analyzed. Aside from that, what should I do about the main quest? Um, I need to talk to little Vlad, of course. I also feel like I should go talk with Lara and Anna and Yulia. Hmm. How's my time looking? I've got, I've got about eight hours. You know what? Okay. Fine. The quest, like... Talking with them is not actually part of the main quest, is it? No, it's actually not. It's part of the side quest, the Panacea Black Market, and that quest is done. But I still feel like I'm supposed to talk to them. So let's go talk with Laura. Let's see if anything interesting happens. If nothing interesting happens with Laura, then I won't talk with the others. Children, yes. Trade. Also, apparently somebody's throwing firebombs at me. Hmm. More antibiotics, no thanks. Honestly, do I even need ammunition? How much do I have? I've got tons of rifle ammunition. Um, let's reload this thing, see how much I've got of it. Oh, right, it's gonna make her run away. No, I'm sorry. I've got six, seven, eight shots of the revolver. You know what, I'm actually good on ammunition. Switch back to my rifle. Yeah, I actually don't think I need to buy any more ammunition. But I am looking for Schmouter. Why would you talk to me? Little girl. Oh, I think she's in a running away state because she saw the gun. Except her running away is like a little shuffle. Yeah, she's running. But this little girl doesn't know how much of a monster I am. What do you have? Immunity. Right, so I've only got two Twirine Extracts, so let's actually buy some. One, two, three, four. Hey, come back here, kid. Got some Meridorm? Do 
do I want more? I don't know, I've got two Twirine Extract, plus I just bought some. Uh, I think I'm good for now. By the way, somebody told me something that I never realized before. I I played through this game for like 20 to 30 hours before somebody said this, and I never realized it the entire time. And that's it. These people, like this, this character model of this boy, they're actually shirtless. I always thought they were wearing like a tan shirt or something. I never thought too hard about it. But they're actually just wearing a scarf and a little jacket, and that's their exposed chest. Yeah, they're actually shirtless. I always thought it was just like a tan shirt or something. I never looked too hard at it. Because they're super cool and cool people don't wear shirts. It is not so dangerous to do wrong to most men as to do them too much good. Okay, good. So we can talk about the panacea. Lara, is it true that Vlad the Younger has sold you a panacea? No, it's not. Oh, why do you even have to ask? Are you all trying to torture me on purpose? Lara, I know everything. Just tell me how it went. How much did he make you shell out? N nothing. It wasn't an item to sell. It was a gift. Have you seen the man recently? He's positively transformed. Something's happened to him. I'm good at spotting these things. But has it occurred to you that I may have parted with my panacea already? Yulia, for example, gave hers to Clara. At least that's what Clara says. So why do you think I haven't done the same? Yeah, people say that the thief has their way of making others part with their belongings. You know what? Please come back tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll talk about it once more. Tomorrow everything will change. It's about many various intertwining plots and agendas. As for now, I don't have a panacea. Sorry. <sighs> Fine, I'll come back tomorrow. By the way... Do you by any chance know the unit number of the troops that have been sent here? No, I don't. Why does she want to know? Clemency is born not of virtue, but rather of fear. Hmm. Yulia, Yulia gave hers to Clara. So, should I even go speak with Yulia about it, or is that pointless? Ah, she's just right there. I'm going to go speak with her about it. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but I feel like I just need to, like, gather tons of evidence before I come to young Vlad. With the fact that he... he's the one that knew about the infection in the termitary to begin with. I think I've got time. I've got four, five, six, seven hours. Seven hours till the end of the day, and I do not need to sleep. Tell me, Yulia, is it true that Vlad Olgimsky gave you a vial of panacea? So this is the panacea after all. Incredible. Wait. Didn't you know? He told me that Barak had managed to compound a cure. He said that I should drink the contents of the vial if I started to feel unwell. It is interesting to note that he warned me, quite deliberately, against telling Clara about it. I gave him a nod of absent-minded consent, and what do you know? The very next moment, Clara was at my doorstep. Hmm. Give it to me, Yulia. 
Not that I mind, but I'm sorry to say I was advised not to. I gave my word that I would not cooperate with you. Don't be so disappointed. I'm not enjoying this whole rigmarole myself. I'm clueless as to what it is intended for. The mind boggles. Who did you give your word to? Was it Vlad the Younger or Clara? You know what? Come come back tomorrow. What? Why does everybody want to speak to me tomorrow? We'll be able to hold a much more productive discussion then, which may be of some use to us both. Meanwhile, I need to think. You see, everything that went on is rather curious in light of certain theories I entertain. Numbers, equations, calculations of possibility. Everything you don't seem to be too fond of yourself. Very well, I'll be back tomorrow. What the hell? <laughs> Should I go speak with Anna? I feel like I should. She's just right there. Let's do it. See if there's any tradables that we can buy in here. Needle. Oh my god. I just got attacked from like five different directions and a plague rat's on me. And I avoided all of it. Whew. Alright, was it you? Are you the mysterious third Life person? Is hard. No, you're not. Wait, who is the mysterious third person then? The quest like the quest log made it sound like it should be obvious. But it's not to me. Ava's not here anymore. I or Ion, whatever, I don't think it would be her. Um, it seems like it was the people that were suspected of being the plague carriers. That's the ones he was giving the panacea to, right? It must be Aspidy. It must be Aspidy. She was one of the other... Yeah, she was one of the other people that I was supposed to get a sample from, although I ended up not getting a sample from her. But it's gotta be Aspidy. She probably didn't want her name to be known because... She didn't want people to know that she took something good from the family that she hates so much, the Olgimskis. That's my guess, anyway. Well, Jesus Christ, at this point I'm so close to Aspidy, I might as well go there and then to the Termitary. Or, you know what? Let's go to the Termitary first. Yeah. Let's just go for the Termitary. Give the medicine to Taya, and speak with Brock. It's the best way there. Go through here, and then go north? Yeah. Go away, rat.
Oh god, that's gonna hit me, isn't it? Mm. It didn't? It didn't. Whew. Looked like it slammed me right in the face. Yeah, this place is so large, it seems to take a while to load. Okay, how's our immunity looking? Oh, our immunity is actually not too good. Let's take the pills. There we go. At about 90% immunity, that's good. Let's hope Barack is still here. See if we can talk to him about the sample that we examined. And then we'll go visit Taya. Hmm. There was a butcher right next to him, and now he's gone. The wound hurts. I've checked the blood. Whose blood is it, Barak? It's not human. The result, Onion? You know I can't tell you. I'm bound by a word given. And I thought that was something you respected. Well, in short, yes. It does produce two types of antibodies. One stops the horned bacteria from propagating, another one kills them. We've got a unicum here. Then you're free to go and test my makeshift panacea on someone. It should work. So now we have a serum. Of a kind. Here, take it. It's sort of a natural extract. That's some wishwash. Give it back then. No, wait. My word, be my bond. It should be effective. Fine, I'll try it. Panacea. An organic serum based on antibodies that Artemy Barak managed There's to procure. There's nothing to talk about now. <clears throat> that Artemy Barak managed to procure from some mysterious source. Completely eradicates the effects of the infection at any stage. Is not harmful. Only a few portions exist in the town. Probably no more than a dozen. My teeth hurt with all the grinding. I guess it's like a better version of a schmouter, apparently. So can you make more of it? That'd be I'd nice. I'd give anything for a decent meal. I got quite a letter from you. Blackmail, is it? Not at all. Just keeping you informed. I see. The Inquisitor has turned her gaze to the abattoir. No good will come of it. Well, I'm certainly not going to test the panacea on myself, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get to test it. Next person like Aspidy who's sick, I guess. Alright, let's go speak with Taya. Give her the medicine. From Capella. Fortunes never come alone. That's what Daddy used to say. Victoria sent these drugs to you. She said you must take them, if you ever feel unwell. Are you sure? It's not real medicine. Well, Capella told me you should take them, if you ever get sick. Alright? Well, alright. But only because Capella says so. I would swallow a bumblebee for her. <laughs> That's a good girl. <laughs> oh, that improved my reputation. Cool. Okay, so... Panacea Black Market. That quest is already finished. Mysterious Sample. Already finished. That crafty Barak. No rest for the wicked. I wonder where you found a monster like this. I never saw blood of this kind before. Is this the main ingredient for his panacea? And this one, also done. The termitary and the polyhedron. These polarized structures stand at opposite ends of the town. They are antithetic of each other. 
regardless of your perspective. I have failed to protect the termitary, and I have neglected the Tower of Children. I can only hope that it does not fall to the same mistake. Alright, so all my side quests are done, although I do still want to speak with Aspidy, since I'm pretty sure she's the one, she's the third person that got given the panacea from young Vlad. Okay. Lyra is a head taller now. Yeah. So, do I tell her? About Olgimski the Elder? Hmm. I feel like I should speak with young Vlad first, I don't know. I'm really torn here, because I want to gather more information, I want to talk to Aspidy, and I want to speak with young Vlad before I make this decision. But I'm not really making a decision here, right? I'm just informing her of something that already happened. So I guess I should just do it. I delivered... <laughs> I delivered you message to Wolkinski the Elder. Bose promised to come. There's no way I can say that without it sounding ridiculous. Bose. 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 He did come. What? What have you done to him? We had him locked up for now. Fair is fair. He locked us up. Now it's our turn. We'll see how it goes. Uh, can I talk to him? No. Tell the butchers to let me in, please. I will. You'll get the rite of passage. Come back half an hour before midnight. The boulder will be rolled away. Perfect. Wow, I'm actually going to get to go inside of the abattoir. Jesus, what am I going to find? I'm scared. I'm curious, but scared. So did that finish the main quest? Well, no, I guess of course not. She said a half hour before midnight, right? But this just says, soon after dark. So once again, I don't actually know when it's going to open up. After dark, or half hour before midnight. Let's just assume it's after dark, to be safe. Which I believe starts at 9 o'clock. Yeah, the, the central entrance. Used normally by the workers, will open soon after dark. Central entrance must be this. It can't get more central than that. Mother will open the entrance before midnight. Alright, well, it is... Let's see, we've got... Is that three hours before midnight? Yeah, we've got about three hours before midnight, which is time enough to go speak with Aspidy, and then speak with Vlad the Younger. So let's do that. Yeah, I think I'll end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to go speak with Aspidy about the panacea that she was, I'm pretty sure, given by young Vlad. Then go speak with young Vlad himself. And then soon after then, we will examine the abattoir 